Jim, the initial reports are coming in that there has been some success in capping the well, that the new preventer uh, appears to be working. What, what is your initial reaction to this? Welcome news. Long overdue, much awaited by everyone in the Gulf and those who depend on the Gulf, those who uh, depend on its seafood production, those who depend on it for jobs and tourism and travel. Uh, but we have to be careful at this point that uh, well is producing oil at a pressure of 13,000 pounds per square inch. We have to see whether uh, the uh, cap is able to contain, channel that pressure and that oil successfully to the surface without putting uh, um, unacceptable pressure on the well pipe lower down to the 18,000 foot level. And the results of, of, of that analysis will not be known for several days yet. For the moment, this is the most success that BP has had in these uh, well over two months since the blowout occurred. In Congress, what are you doing? You're moving ahead with oil spill legislation. Uh, how does this bear on the work that you're doing? This was an entirely preventable failure. Had BP been required to file a response plan in which they would have had to uh, c conduct an analysis of all the factors, the water temperature, the oil pressure, uh, at the uh, reservoir itself, 18,000 feet below mud line. The oil pressure as it, uh, as it reaches the, the pipe itself, and the riser as it's called. Uh, the capacity of the blowout preventer to, to uh, shut off that pipe uh, and, and to contain this amount of pressure. None of that was thought out ahead of time. There was no analysis of what escape of oil of this magnitude would, effect it would have on the water column, on the plant life, on the, uh, on the uh, uh, fisheries of the Gulf. None of that was done. If that had been required, then uh, a better blowout preventer would have been, a, a backup system would have been required for this. So, uh, more testing would have been required. We, we do that in the bill that I reported for my committee. We, we prohibit in the future any exemption from filing a response plan. The Bush administration exempted BP from filing a response plan in May of 2008. That's unacceptable and that will not happen in the future. There, there was no one in charge of, of, of well, no one person in charge of the drilling vessel itself and the drilling rig, we will require one command structure in the future for such drilling operations. There was no expertise in the Coast Guard and the Minerals Management Service to uh, manage these operations at those extraordinarily uh, risky depths. We require that skill, that technology, that uh, preparation in our bill in the future and additional Coast Guard personnel to handle the certification and the oversight and the inspection of such vessels and drill rigs in the future. Uh, we, limit the, uh, we, we lift the limit on, on oil spill responsibility. Uh, now it's at $75 million. There will be no limit in the, in the future uh, under our legislation. So that even those loons that will migrate from Minnesota this fall to the Gulf area, uh, if damaged by the oil spill, BP will be responsible for their cleanup, for the restoration, and, and for uh, repatriation. After hearing this good news right now, what's your next step? How are you going to, what, what does this news set in motion for Jim Overstock? Well, this means that uh, we will continue on course with our legislation. We'll merge uh, my committee's bill with that of uh, one or two other committees and, and bring that legislation to the floor before the August recess and, uh, and then hopefully get the Senate to act on it and take these actions that will prevent this kind of failure in the future. 